Hello and welcome to the ninth video of Pultrusion Machine series. This time around I will be showing you first beta prototype that has been organized and assembled. All the printed parts you will see in this video will be linked in the description below. As you can see, this is a complete and cleaned up machine that may not look like a professional product, but I think it turned out quite nicely. If I wanted to, I could always design some cable holders, redesign enclosure, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of adding plastic where a simple zip tie does the job. And there is really nothing stopping you from doing so. However, there were two cases where designing something was necessary and first one is the electronic enclosure, which you can see right here. It was printed in the last two videos as a time-lapse. Top from the bluish water bottle and bottom from the transparent cola bottle. Let me open it up to see what's inside. It has quite nice snap fit mechanism that doesn't require screws. However, I did not like the initial version with printed mounts for PCB, so I simply removed them, drilled a 3mm hole and put screw from the back side. Capacitors on the top are necessary, however I have already fixed that in PCB design, so you won't have to mount them like this, as they now have a proper place. Second thing that was necessary were these legs and flexible covers on them. Without them hiding cables could prove challenging and there would be no dampening vibrations. As you can see they were printed in PET. Covers in TPU. From the bottom I simply screwed a couple of screws and zip tied the cables around them. Here is also a step-down converter that produces 5 volts for the microcontroller. I have also bought this power supply, which is now externally mounted and connected with wire terminals. It was unfortunately too big to fit underneath the machine, and I really didn't want to buy another smaller one. In the background you will see a time-lapse of how Pultrusion works. Spoiler alert! the same as in video number 5, just without the cable spaghetti. So let's wrap up this series with some final thoughts. The more I printed with PET, the more I liked it. Even for more precise things such as this entire print head on Correxi machine. Yes, it was printed in pure PET. It is similar material to PET-G, but much more heat resistant, stronger in every aspect such as tensile strength, bending durability and impact resistance than PET-G. You can confirm this while watching CNC Kitchen video. So as time went on, I began to change my mind about the use case of this filament, making it my default choice whenever I want something durable. I would love to see this filament being sold in normal spools without any additives, but unfortunately neither recycled PET nor the PET I have seen commercially available comes close to the real deal. Very first sign that commercial fil filament has a lot of additives is processing temperature that you can see here. 200 to 240 degrees is a range that the real PET won't even extrude. Second sign is when a filament is being advertised as easy to print. Well, PET from bottles is the exact opposite to easy to print. Of course, I have not seen all available products, so if you know one that sells a genuine PET, let me know in the comments down below. Perhaps when I make my own filament extruder, I will try to make one from the virgin pellets and see how it goes, but for now I will stick to recycling PET bottles as I'm getting very used to it. Last thing I want to mention is crystallization process. When you see your pet prints turning cloudy, it's actually not a bad sign. Material becomes a little more brittle 
but also a lot stronger. So it's up to you to determine if you wish to retain the ductile properties or you would rather have an incredible impact resistance. It also shrinks a bit, which is undesirable effect, but nothing that cannot be fixed. If you want to prevent crystallization, you'll have to print slower at lower temperatures and apply a bit more cooling. Do the opposite if you wish to crystallize your prints. However, be aware that at very high temperatures, you will clog your nozzle very easily. This wraps up this video. Hope you learned something and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Next video series will be about transforming Tronxy X5SA to a better printer.